Cool. So hi guys. Uh, this is Chris from Draw Hacks, and since the live streaming is is online, we can start from here. Uh, cool. my, so, hi guys. Uh, this is Chris from Draw Hacks, and since the live streaming is is online, we can start from here. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, it's my pleasure to host your guest today. Uh, uh, for another East Denver virtual uh, hackathon project demo session. Uh, for this year, it's actually the first time that Dora Hacks to support the East Denver on both uh, uh, in person and virtual hackathon. And finally, we got nearly 400 uh, projects submissions on both uh, in person and virtual sites. And uh, this is which is pretty great. And today we are very happy to have uh, six projects with us. Uh, they are Green Earth DAO, Truth, Chains of Glory, uh, NFT unlock, un Unlockable Content, uh, NFT Tickets, and Proof. Uh, they are uh, the, the project that uh, in the virtual hackathon. And we are really looking forward to see uh, like the, the, the great projects like you guys to emerge and you know kick up the uh, next best products in the industries. Yeah, so without further ado, let's welcome the first project to, to start, which is the Green Nurse DAO. And for audience, if you have any questions during the session, please feel free to ask uh, in DraHack's YouTube channel. Yeah, and Aris, and yeah, feel free to start. Hi, everyone. First, can you guys hear me? Yep, yep. Okay, first, I would like to thank you guys for having me here today. And uh, today, I'll be doing the presentation, and I will introduce our core concept in our Green Earth DAO, which is a photo to earn in Metaverse. So what do we... What does Green Earth DAO do? Basically, we uh, provide a platform for for those who love taking photos of, of animals and plants around the world, very community. So basically how this application work, uh, you can see there's a photo and uh, which I will be explaining later in the next slide. So basically the users uh, can take a photo and upload the photo on the platform, then we will create an NFT for each photo and then the data will be stored um, in the interplanetary file system, IPFS. Uh, what's, what's really interesting to, is the data will include the coordinates of the objects which with a unique hash. Uh, in the same time as a platform, we will help to preserve the copyright you know, for the photographers. So you can see, uh, here's the demonstration you can see there, there is a documentation info. You can see there is a there is a series number, which is the photo's timestamp. It's a verification, and it proves when uh, it proves the specific time and where, like when is this photo taken. Then there you can see the the name, the the photographer, and the date, and the title, the size of the file, the resolution, and most importantly, and um, this location in this location part. The longitude and latitude of this of this this photo you know, that, it, that was taken will be recorded. Then you can share the photo and upload it. Once you upload it on a platform, we will generate, we will create a NFT for each single photo. So why are we doing this? Because uh, how we uh, how we got inspired at the very beginning is. We realize uh, people around the world. There are so many people who, who really, truly love and care about animals and and our nature, especially endangered animals. Here's here a few screenshots uh, from the social media. You can see people around the world and are constantly trying to discovering and protecting endangered animals. They will take a photo of those endangered animals and upload those photos on social media, which increase the awareness of. Uh, and, and also provide really valuable information for uh, biologists and for scientists for scientific research. Here, here are two photos of 
our community members uh, who who help us to test our application. The, they're professional photographers. They love. They like to go to the you know in the forest and take photos of those wild animals. And and also on our platform, another another really important concept is is through NFT taking photos, creating NFT for photos is. It helps the photographers, you know, people who love plants, and animals, or people who love uh, plant and animal photographers around the world. They help them to connect with each other. With each other, as as a DAO, Green Earth DAO, we also host an uh, annual wild animal photo contest and a series event. And and we estimated, we estimated that each year there will be forty eight thousand photos from. Uh, from over a hundred countries, and they will participate, and those photos will be created, and will be created and spread it as NFT, and then will all those NFTs will be promoted through social media such as Twitter and Instagram. And more importantly, we hoped through a series of events to promote the theme: no wild animal consumption, no purchase, and uh, no purchase of wild animal products. And another another important feature of, of Green Earth DAO is our Metaverse project. So basically, our Metaverse is is a projection of the real world, and we will do a land sale. So how does this work, and how do you profit from purchasing a land? So basically, if if you purchase, we you can buy a piece of this. You know this earth in this metaverse of like a virtual earth you, for example if you buy a piece of land that happens to a you know very popular you know forest with a, with a great variety of species and photographers love to go there taking photos when they take photos and upload the photos on our platform we create an nft for them people can also trade and buy and sell those nfts on our platform then as the land owner you know with as the landowners, when people create NFT in the land, in your land, you can get a share from their transaction. And also, and this metaverse can provide, you know, for for scientific research, it can provide some, for example, on this on this map, you can you can check a specific location, check the uh, biodiversity impact, and it helps you to do some to the to the biological survey as well. And also, people can browse. And view all the uploaded animals and plants on the map. You know, you can just like a, take a virtual tour. You know, in the metaverse, in the metaverse, and also like a zoo. And also with some like live stream function, people like a zoo, they can create a virtual zoo, and with real time update, people can just do you know watch it through live, watch those animals uh, through live stream. As for the token economic, uh, the core concept is photo to earn. You know the play to earn, move to earn is really popular right now. So our application we also build on Solana, Solana, which provides really fast transaction and low cost. And we will adapt a dual token system. The first one is token A, which is it works as an in-game token used for NFT upgrade and the maintenance re reproduce. And token B, uh, we work as the governance token, which helps to remain the balance of supply and the demand sustainability in the ecosystem. Uh, in the early stage, most of the users are from China, Japan, USA, UK, South Asian countries. If you guys are interested in this project, okay, here is it. Okay, if you guys are interested in this project, you can go follow us on Twitter, Green Earth Dao, and thanks guys for hearing. Hi, Tina. Hi, uh, I'm this is Tina from the Green Earth Star Asia. I would like to thank the uh, me member of the Robodog who have the blockchain no knowledge, brave, positive, strong excuses, and uh, rich. Their name is Zhao Ge, Wang Laoshi, Yi Ge, Suo Liang, Chang Zhang, Xiang Cai, Xi Feng, Hei Yang, Sai Gua Yi Zao, Ji Guang Mao, Qu Shi Ge, Xiao Zhan, Meng Xin, and uh, uh, also, thank to the member of the big player, Green Earth Star, belong to each of you. Thanks, everyone.
喵喵喵。Well, uh, thank you very much, guys, for for the presentation, and also thanks uh, for the cute ending. Uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna move to the next project, which is the truth. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we can start with the video, and then I'll say when to cut it, and then we'll get into the presentation. Cool. Yeah. On this side of the border, especially when it comes to the Keystone XL pipeline, Michael Couture is following the developments. He joins us now from Ottawa. Mike, we appreciate you. Right. Yeah, okay, we can go on. Yeah, okay, so um, I want to switch the presentation now. Thank you. Okay, right. can you guys hear me? Yep. Sound good? Yep. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay, so welcome to Truth, uh, the Akashic record. Truth guarantees immutability of video with a signature for authentication and traceability through time. So immutability means that if we were to change a single byte of a video, say we hack the server of a news agency and edit their original feed, or we zoom into a video to give a different perspective, the video would produce a copy, leaving the original intact. Authenticity means we can sign this immutable video, guaranteeing the original source of the video being the signer. For example, BBC News can sign their broadcast with a key pair known to everyone as the official BBC News key pair. This gives us 100% confidence on the origin of the video. Traceability through time. This is important because if you take a look at this developing story, the original source was Channel 5 News. The same story was rebroadcast with the narrative changed by Russia 24. And then yet again, the same story was rebroadcast with the narrative changed yet again. Without a chain of authenticity, we cannot be sure if Channel 5 originally reported the story or if it came from another station. Truth only guarantees the media is 100% authentic from the source who signed it. Plus, it guarantees when we receive the media over a transport medium like the internet, all bytes are intact and have not been manipulated on their way. Now, it is up to you to choose which sources you trust. On the left is Zuck saying something about election fraud and how he's not responsible. On the right is an incriminating deepfake. The video on the left was signed by Facebook. The video on the right is circulating but has no signature. We have a 100% fact in front of us that the video on the right is of an unknown origin. Thus, we can make up our own mind of how we choose our truth. Truth is more of a protocol, but regardless, we made a front end for a showcase. Let's go through it in the presentation. First, to create content, we need to transcode plus pin it on IPFS. We can select the video from our computer and upload it to a GPU transcoder node, which will transcode it to HLS plus pin it on IPFS. This same node that does the transcode and pinning can also run locally. It does not matter. We'll get returned an IPFS set of our HLS folder. We can go on Cloudflare IPFS and browser folder. And as you can see, it's a standard HLS video file with the different resolutions, including the playlist. And as well, we've also included a video and image preview and some native data, which can describe the title and the description of the video. Now, all that's left to do is sign this 
root folder SID. Once we've signed it, this is how it looks like when it's fully signed. We can watch it off on any IPFS gateway, and we can see that it was signed by BUG, MH, X, et cetera. This public key can be looked up in a registry for a name, like BBC News. Now, if we go to the Discover page, we see a bunch of videos. These videos are all part of a single content chain. Uh, an IPFS SID chain is simply another IPFS file containing the signature of the video plus a pointer to the previous video in the chain. If we can find at least one video, we can traverse the entire chain in reverse until we get to the first video. Anyone can run their own chain, and the chain shown on the Discover page is just the default chain. So landing in IPFS 0.13 is verifiable gateway responses. This is what will give our media 100% authenticity. This means as the video stream arrives to our browser from a gateway, no one can tamper with it en route, and the gateway itself cannot serve a fake. Decentralization. So everything is stored on IPFS, including the chain links. The only part that needs constant updating is the head SID um, that's, that needs to be publicly discoverable. So this contains the newest video added to the chain. Uh, this could be stored on a blockchain or even via IPNS or a memorable, memorable name or even traditional DNS. Also, uh, GPU edge node is needed to transcode the video to HLS plus pin on IPFS, but that can be run locally. Or you can even run an FF command, uh, FFmpeg command locally to output HLS to a folder and then pin it on IPFS yourself. Uh, so platform is democratic as content is stored in a common medium, IPFS, and SID chains can be run by anyone. Uh, funny cat videos might be ran by a cat lover who only links cat videos. BBC News chain might only allow videos signed by their reporters to be part of it. As long as we can find any link in the chain, we can always traverse down to find the rest of the videos in that chain. Now the legal question. IPFS gateway operators are fully responsible for the content they serve and need to comply with the jurisdiction they are in. We are thinking of making a plugin on top of IPFS for DMCA compliance to automatically block content that breaks local law. But because IPFS is a decentralized network, a video blocked in one jurisdiction might be legal in another and can totally be served from a gateway of that jurisdiction. The financial structure would be solely a nonprofit. There is no need to issue any tokens. A sizable bootstrap converted into stake thief would probably keep the foundation running for life. The ownership structure would need to be ran as a DAO that will emit funds to IPFS gateway operators. As video content requires much storage, much more storage and bandwidth than simply JPEGs. Plus, they also need to comply with DMCA. Staking ETH after proof of work ends should provide enough API to found the foundation for life. Our team and GitHub. And shout outs to Jeropo from IPFS. He came up with the idea to simply sign the IPFS root folder set of the HLS video. It's simply uh, simple, elegant, and brilliant. And yeah, that's it. Got it, got it. Thank you very much for the presentation and demo. Uh, it's uh, d definitely looks interesting. And I believe the, 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 the problem that you guys address is uh, getting more and more serious. So I believe in the future, definitely uh, more applications like you guys uh, emerged. And I wish that uh, you guys could you know, achieve uh, some really uh, good uh, uh, milestones for this year's, especially in, in, in this year's. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're going to move to the next project, which is the Chains of the Glory. Okay, can you see the presentation? Uh, yeah. A diverse yeah. game set in a fantastic oh. world full of adventures. Sorry. In the game, we must control characters to advance in the gameplay by doing quests and earning rewards. All characters, equipment, and game status are. Sorry, this <laughs> I should put this video after the presentation. So uh, let's start with the presentation. Let me share the screen. And let me... Yeah, can you see now the, the presentation? 
Yes. Perfect. So, Jaime, go ahead. Okay, so hi builders and everybody. We are really pleased to share our project with all of you guys. It is called uh, Chains of Glory, an NFTs plus DeFi video game in the metaverse. So let's jump right into it. So the video game industry is a $175 billion market. In addition, the metaverse is expected to hit $1 trillion valuation by 2024. So video games and the metaverse are a huge opportunity. However, we identified several frequent problems regarding the blockchain-based gaming industry. First of all, uh, the economics underlying playing to earn games are unsustainable. The users are rewarded at the expense of new players coming in. in a, and this is known as a um, pyramidal scheme. In addition, uh, professional players discourage the rest. They bleed out the majority of the game rewards and as a consequence, the user experience is unpleasant. For these reasons, these games uh, fail creating a lasting community and after a period of hype, they are usually abandoned. We are proud uh, to offer the solution. So Chains of Glory is a project with a clear value proposition. We move from play to earn to play to enjoy and earn. And this means that we are able to create a sustainable economic system while offering a great user experience and also incentives for every player at level. And all of this fostering the creation of a strong community. Now my colleague Javier is going to walk you through the prototype of the, prototype of the game. Yeah. So uh, previous to the, um, to, the pro to the demo of the prototype of the game, I wish to show you a, a short video. So let me now <laughs> put this one. Wait a minute. Ah, I hate this. It should be easier, no? It's a metaverse game set in a fantastic world full of adventures. In the game, we must control characters to advance in the gameplay by doing quests and earning rewards. All characters, equipment and game status are stored on the blockchain network in the form of NFTs. We are very proud to have solved the main problems that all blockchain games have. We have created a sustainable economy thanks to the use of DeFi and our native token. We foster a lasting community of gamers. We have moved from play to earn, to play to enjoy and earn. We encourage new players to enter. Because in the metaverse, those who have a community of users will have a huge competitive advantage. Chains of Glory sets a new paradigm in metaverse gaming. So, well, now let me share the screen to make the, the, the demo. Can you see the, um, the web of, blockchain, of uh, Chains of Glory? Or you are still seeing the video? Yes, we can see it. You can see the, the screen. Okay. So Chains of Glory is a, a web free video game. That means that it is fully integrated in the blockchain. All the data, all the statistics, the character, the equipment, all are stored in the blockchain, uh, mostly in the form of NFTs. So to start the demo, first, I need to connect to my wallet. And the first thing we need to do to play Ch Chains of Glory is to own a hero. I previously purchased a couple of them, but we can purchase a hero at any time here, recruiting one. As you can see, there are different classes it's one with its own statistics. All these heroes are NFTs. So I can trade these NFTs in any, or in any market like OpenSea or, or whatever other. Another interesting section of the game is the armory. In the armory, I can see all the different gear and equipment that I have for my characters. I can also purchase some of this gear in the armory shop, but the gear that we can purchase here is very basic. We can pay with the internal token of the game, Chains of Glory, Koch. 
But as I said, the, the real nice stuff you can only get by playing Quest as a revenue of the, of the Quest. So now that we have heroes and, and equipment, we can move to equip some of our heroes. For example, we can use the different gear that we previously purchased. And as you can see, as long as I equip my hero, the statistics are increasing. Uh, all the uh, interaction with the game has done, uh, are, are done uh, through the blockchain. If I wish to make this equipment uh, permanent, I, need, I must uh, send the transaction to the blockchain. Okay. So far, we have a hero uh, properly equipped. And now we can play a quest. But before that, I wish to point out one interesting thing. As you can see, a part of, uh, or in addition to equip our hero, we can level up both our hero and also our equipment. But we can only level up up to 13 level, up to 10 in this case. And this limit level will be increased from time to time. For example, you can go up to level 10 in both heroes and equipment for six months. And in the following six months, we can increase to level 15 and so on. And why are we doing that? No? That is because by doing this kind of tiering, we allow the new players to have time to catch the veteran ones. So we don't want to leave behind anyone. So as I said, now that we have uh, our heroes equipped, we can go to play the quests. Uh, there are different quests and play a quest is quite simple. We only need to choose the hero we wish to play uh, the, the quest with and the level of the quest. The higher is the level, the hardest is to complete and the higher is also the revenue that we'll provide. Again, playing a quest is an interaction with the blockchain. I'm gonna reject just yes, because they take can some seconds or some time and I don't wish to spend a lot of time on doing this. Uh, and at the end, when you complete a quest, what you go, uh, get is a chest, a closed chest. Uh, what inside the chest may be token of the game, Koch, maybe another NFTs such as uh, characters or equipment, but you don't know until you open the chest. And the good thing here is that the chests are also NFTs that, that you can trade in, in open markets. Uh, and the last but not the least is that when you play a quest with your hero, both the hero and the equipment get a time lock for a third time time. Third time amount of time, this hero cannot be used for play another quest. And this is one of the um, methods that Chains of Glory has to protect against uh, professional or compulsive players. No, That's impossible to start playing continuously Chains of Glory just because of these um, time locks. So that's the demo of the game. I uh, give back the control to, to uh, Jaime to continue the presentation. So. OK, thank you, Javier. So in order to achieve the sustainable ecosystem, uh, the game counts on um, three uh, primary sources of income. The character sales, uh, the royalties for every NFT traded, and also DeFi returns. Additionally, it also counts with other um, non-recurrent um, sources of income, such as uh, marketing um, actions or, or token sales. Next slide, please. So to finish this project, we are currently looking for some initial funding and we proposed uh, this tokenomics. So if there, if there is anybody that is interested, uh, we will be eager uh, to get in touch. We'll provide uh, our contact details later in the presentation. Regarding our, road, our roadmap, uh, there are several milestones uh, to be met. Uh, we will be releasing a closed beta version in a couple of days. We will arrange private and public sales. And finally, if everything goes as ex expected, uh, we will reach production in five to six months. And just to end up with the presentation, uh, I would like to have uh, some words about the team. Uh, we are just for people and we all have uh, regular jobs. So we feel really proud of the product that we are passionately 
uh, building in our spare our spare time. So that has been all from us. Uh, I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the presentation. Feel free to reach us through any of these media and see you guys in the metaverse. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, the chain of uh, Chains of Glory team for the presentation. Uh, looks really interesting. And uh, uh, when the when when gonna the like the 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 uh, beta version open for users? We expect to have a closed beta only for whitelisted people uh, along this month. Okay. Uh, and an open beta. Uh, Probably in June, July, but uh, it depends uh, on the private sale that we are trying to do because we need some funding to, to move ahead with the project. Got it, got it. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. And I see that NF tickets uh, teammates asking for, for, for the plan of the token distribution. You, you, you can uh, share the information in the private chat, chat room with, with them. And we're gonna move to the next project, which is the NFT unlock unlockable content. Yeah, and Varda, that's your time. Uh, don't forget to unmute yourself. Uh, Varda, uh, you 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 are mute, muted. Ah, uh, yeah. muted. Yeah, right now it's good. Right now it's good. Okay, okay. Now now you can hear me. Okay. Fine. Let's share the screen. Uh, yeah, share the screen. Okay, and let's start the slideshow. Um, Varda is a, a very big project at the moment, and it's been divided in uh, little tools and, and in little steps uh, in order to find um, little niche uh, inside the ecosystem that we leverage, leverage to in order and uh, and uh, maintain the main project. Okay, so this is uh, the Varda tools, and in this case, the Varda Vault is uh, built to distribute immutable content and connect uh, this uh, secret content to the NFTs in the wall near NFT ecosystem. So we leverage other marketplace, okay? Uh, what we want to do is to find new meanings for ownership. So the idea is that uh, we, are, uh, we want artists to use our, um, our tool and our uh, API, because we also have an API, uh, to create new meanings for the ownerships of their NFTs. Um, the basic project for the vault is the, uh, built on the graph and on the, on the proof of stake near NFT uh, blockchain. So we use uh, the um, key store managing method from the near blockchain, and we built uh, the, web the website to connect the unlockable secret content uh, to NFTs with the graph, with two subgraphs. And uh, these are choices. We have choices. We have chosen these two tools the newly born proof of stake ecosystem and the graph. The most important at the moment is the graph because uh, uh, what we want to do is to have, is have reliable data for our NFTs. Uh, and uh, the graph uh, is uh, an assurement of this because it's decentralized. Um, and we also uh, are Basically, we don't have uh, one blockchain. We don't want to be fixed on one blockchain. Okay, We want to work on a shared standard between blockchains and between ecosystems because the culture of ownership 
related to of digital ownership related to NFTs is shared. It's it's been built first on the Ethereum ecosystem, and we wish to move it further on the proof of stake near ecosystem. The graph also provides a, a year a yield from the queries to our uh, APIs. So each time uh, an NFT artist or uh, a ticket provider that wants to sell tickets through NFTs use uh, our system, our uh, connection system, uh, we earn some, uh, some tokens from the graph. And uh, in this way, we will be able to maintain the other, um, the other tools that Varda is going to build for the NFT ecosystem on NIR. Our team, which are uh, basically the people that uh, have been building with me on the graph. Uh, one is uh, Vital Point, uh, is Aaron, and is uh, a very, very good uh, dev. And it, uh, is also uh, building uh, um, subgraphs for near. Subgraphs are the graphs of, of uh, the graph for near and uh, are the APIs of the graph. And uh, he's been helping me in building the, gra the graph for uh, the Varda Vault. And uh, in this way, we are using the, the graph, his subgraphs for the Varda Vault. We, we are able to provide information about NFTs in a very fast and performative way. With the Data Guild, we have further plans. And in particular, in the second link that is here that I can send you in the chat if you want afterwards, uh, there, is, there are some bounties built on the work of, our, of Varda because what we want to do is we want to create um, uh, an ecosystem for the near subgraphs inside of the, the graph of the graph decentralized network. Okay. The scarcity tools are uh, other tools that we are uh, developing at the moment and that uh, we will be maintaining thanks to the, um, uh, to the tokens that we earn from the queries of our graph. The scarcity tools were made to basically swap NFTs for uh, liquid staking, staking token on here. Anyone who knows what's a, what a proof of stake uh, blockchain is knows what is a liquid staking token. And we have uh, a good project for this uh, on, um, on here. But I'm missing a slide here. I'm missing the. Okay. We have a good project for this uh, on here with. Um, 100 uh, validators that uh, give uh, their uh, staking uh, shares to this liquid token, uh, liquid token. Um, and we are leveraging it to create uh, these uh, uh, scarcity tools. These scarcity tools are basically a way to interact with the world of the NFTs, creating scarcity because people can swap their unvaluable NFTs for staking, for sta liquid staking to tokens. Uh, in this way, any NFT become, becomes a way to stake tokens into the, the blockchain nodes. So it becomes a way to contribute to decentralization and uh, also, uh, we contribute to, to the scarcity of the NFT ecosystem because people that don't think they, the NFT is valuable, they will swap it, they will burn it. And so in this way, only valuable NFTs will remain into the ecosystem. Okay. We, what we are building are uh, metaverse uh, swap events for uh, uh, the nearverse and uh, events swapping events that uh, are built with single collections, um, like um, PFP collections. And what we want to build with the scarcity tool is scarcity for the NFT ecosystem and uh, decentralization awareness for the 
uh, proof of stake decentralization model. <clears throat> Oh, this is the <laughs> this is the slide I was looking for. This is the meta pool. The meta pool uh, is the liquid staking token. Oh gosh, sorry guys. It's the liquid staking token uh, with uh, 100 uh, nodes, and we also have uh, actually a list. Um, we have been collecting collecting nodes, validation nodes from near for months. And we probably will build some kind of uh, NFT DAO like Poseidon has done in the last year. But it's this is a long run, okay? Building NFT DAOs is a, 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 is a project that needs to be maintained and built for years, okay? So we are taking Poseidon NFTs DAO like a northern star to build something like that with with the nodes, with the blockchain nodes. This is the reason why I work with the Near Data Guild, which is part of the this Data Guild. And uh, it's uh, actually the supply and demand yield model of the graph. It's very interesting, but uh, there is uh, some problem with the indexing reward for Near. And this is the reason why we have the bounty open, uh, because uh, basically we have to um, have our own indexer on the graph blockchain that uh, market the, the near data in their own way, which is different from the Ethereum blockchain. Um, we have, there is a link in this, uh, to the discussion in this second link. Okay, so you can you can get there. It's a little complicated and technical, but basically, the supply and demand is uh, model is uh, based on the amount of demand that we have that we can have on our co uh, unlockable content uh, tool. And as you can see, Paras is one of our marketplace is the marketplace from which we earn, and the volume. Uh, of uh, transactions in um, on Paras just for the uh, last uh, 30, day, 30 days, it's very high. So there is potential. But there is also the Human Guild DAO, which I'm a part of and uh, has been building with the Varda Vault, um, which funded games. And we have re just received funding from uh, Filecoin to build um, an API, a gaming API using our subgraphs. So our subgraphs will be using not also the Paras transactions and data, but also the games that uh, have been funded by the Human Guild DAO and that will be funded by the Human Guild DAO. The link to the DAO and to the amount of projects that they are funding is in the slide. This is a little walk through. There's no audio because I, I don't like too, too loud audio. But this is the Varda Vault, basically, how it works. Let's see if it starts. OK. This was the test net. After this, this slide, there is a, a, a video slide. This was the testnet try for the um, for the vault. After this, there is the tutorial. There are two videos, like as you can see, you can get the unlockable over here. The the um, the tool just watch the wallet. It's not allowed to do any transaction on the wallet. Watch watch the wallet watches the wallet and. Uh, uh, if there is no unlockable attached to the NFT, you can attach yours. There are um, two links to the creator's guide and to the link copy. The link copy is the gaming copy. Okay. Just attach your link and then you, you write into our DB, which is actually a file coin DB. When you attach your file, you can attach for both, for Paras and for Mintbase. And then, yes, there are the scarcity tools, which is the stove. As you can see, 
we mentioned metapool and uh, but the the scarcity tools are not yet functional okay okay this is all guys unless you you have some other question for me i, I think i, I made it <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for for the presentation. Really appreciate your time. Uh, from my side, I don't I don't have much questions. Uh, and yeah, but but I would say it looks really cool. And uh, hope 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 uh, we could see uh, more updates uh, from from the Varda team for uh, in the next few months. It's built for the long term, so uh, there will be there will be better development in the future. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, yeah thank you very much for the presentation, and we're gonna move to the next project, which is the NF tickets. All right, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Okay, great. All right, hey guys, I'm CJ. Um, our hackathon project was NF tickets. Uh, so I'll, I'll get into a little bit of how we got to NF tickets. Um, so the first thing was that, uh, you know, we did it through Ethereum Denver. So um, I have a main project I'm working on called AI Sports, uh, we're a daily fantasy sports uh, platform for Web3. And so I wanted to do something that was like kind of tangentially related to uh, AI sports. And so what we've, I found a group via the Discord um, for ETH Denver. And we decided on doing uh, NF tickets, which is NFT-based ticket tickets for sporting events, music, really anything. We like to think of ourselves as like kind of the event bright of uh, you know ticketing in Web three. I don't know what my looks like. My internet's been going a little bit in and out, so apologize if I'm breaking up. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a, a couple things about why. You know, we would want NF tickets versus just the usual, you know, way we're doing ticketing today. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm U.S. based, so uh, most of our tick, you know, our ticketing here goes through a platform called Ticketmaster, which I think is worldwide. So I think most people should have heard of it. But Ticketmaster charges exorbitant fees. Um, you know, for example, we bought tickets to a basketball game a couple months ago, and the tickets themselves are fifty dollars. And we bought two tickets; they should have been a hundred dollars. After fees, it was a hundred and seventy dollars. So. Ticketmaster pretty much owns ticketing. They have a monopoly basically in the U.S. Um, on tickets. And then that's not if you want to transfer your tickets. So these $50 tickets, we decided we weren't going to go to the game. We could sell tickets, but only on Ticketmaster's specific marketplace. Ticketmaster's specific marketplace, they charge you $10 just to sell the tickets. And then the buyer is also charged for buying the tickets as well. Um, and so the original $50 tickets that we are listing for $50, we're only getting for $40 and they're basically buying for $60 and we have to lower it even more if we want to just hit the exact price for the, for the buyer to pay that they would have paid just going directly from Ticketmaster themselves. So the reason Ticketmaster can do this is because they basically own the marketplace. And so NF tickets changes things a little bit because you know, we're not trying to own the marketplace. We will have a marketplace if you want to exchange tickets on our platform. But really, any marketplace could open up. You know, your NFTs, they live with you. Uh, so compared to living with somebody like Ticketmaster, where they live on their servers and you can only do so much with that, you know, you own your tickets as an NFT. So you can sell them on our marketplace. You can sell them on, you know, maybe Ticketmaster will open up one when they, when they realize that this is a better solution. Um, so those are really a, a, a few of the pain points that we felt that really drove us to, um, to you know, launch NF tickets. And then the last thing we thought was a really cool application for this is basically you own your proof of history. Um, so let's say you're a really big like Drake fan. You're a really, really big Drake fan. You've been to 10 of his concerts and you now own that history. So you can go to let's say Drake's website and say, you know, they have something where let's verify how big of a fan you are. And now maybe you can access VIP tickets or VIP merch or swag or whatever, or maybe even an in-person meet and greet or something like that, because you have the proof of the ownership that you've been to 10 of his concerts. Um, and you know, this is just a start. Uh, this can extend beyond ticketing. Uh, proof of fandom is, is, is Will, will likely be a very big thing. So um, yeah, that was a little bit about the 
the impetus behind why we started NF Tickets. So I guess I can just jump into a demo here. So let me see if I can share my screen. My non-technical girlfriend is way better than me at technical tasks. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So now you can see it. Okay. So this is the create event um, tab that I was talking about. And then, uh, so yeah, we're saying Will Smith is the artist he's creating. Let's call it the uh, Getting Jiggy With It tour. I don't know if y'all, you guys remember Getting Jiggy With It, but it was this album from like 1992. It was great. Okay, so let's say the event is going to be on April 30th um, at, a, at 9 p.m. Okay, and the number of tickets, let's say 10. Okay, so then we'll create the ticket. And right now we, we're on the uh, Polygon testnet. So it's my internet's been a little bit slow, but it'll come up here. Hopefully, and my main account. Okay, so we're just mentioning the tickets. Uh, basically, what this is doing is creating, a, um, giving ticket ID for this, you know, basically the next 10 tickets in the stack, which are going to be specifically reserved uh, for the Will Smith Getting Jiggy With It tour. Um, and so now that it's been confirmed on the Polygon blockchain, we will get a ticket URL. And so this is the ticket URL that you you can share with you know your fans uh will smith will share with his fans and then you so they can he can they can get this ticket url and then they'll go here and this is also this is um basically uploading to an ipfs and so this is also taking a little bit of time uh, but then you get the details on the getting jiggy with it tour and this is this would be what a fan would see and so the fan could go and mint a ticket and so this will be the same process for the fan they'll go through and mint a ticket. Um, we do have on the contract, we have options for pricing, um, but we didn't implement that on the front end yet. Um, also just because we don't wanna keep asking for faucet funds. Um, so now the ticket will be minting. Um, and once the ticket is confirmed on the blockchain, we'll be able to see all of the tickets that a specific user has. Um, so we'll just go here and say, see your tickets. So this should connect. So this this specific person has a lot of different nice tickets here, Drake and John Mayer and Kanye, but we are specifically interested in Will Smith's. So we will go to see the ticket. So this is the NF ticket. Um, you know, some UI. This was meant for mobile. So um, what what I'm basically going to do here is I'm going to copy this link because this link you will be the ticket that the user has on their mobile device. And so what I'm going to do is open this up in my MetaMask browser because we need to be connected to a uh, wallet in order to access the ticket. Um, so I will copy this, paste it, okay, in my MetaMask browser on my phone because this will be what the user has. They go to the you know the venue or the concert, and then on here the venue will have their scanner app, which they can just go to nftickets.com slash scanner. And so we will allow this, there we go. And so you can scan the ticket here and it'll check against the blockchain to make sure you are the owner of the ticket and the ticket hasn't been used yet. And then you'll see here, the ticket is, here's a ticket owner's address and then your ticket is valid, please enjoy the show. And the person can go into the, uh, to the event. So yeah, that's basically all we have um, for NF tickets. Like I said, it, it was a, a project uh, that we used for ETH Denver. We were lucky enough to get some of the prizes from uh, Polygon and Chainlink. Um, so, you know, happy to, you know, it, it display it here as well. But my main project is AI sports that I kind of branched this off of. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Uh, I know there are some technical issues, but everything looks pretty uh, clear and smooth to me, actually. Yeah, so thank you for the presentation and appreciate your time. Uh, okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, we're going to move to the next project, which is the proof. I believe it's the last project today. Hey, everyone. Um, this is Hong Hao from Proof. Let me try to share my screen. Hopefully, I don't have the same problem just now. Okay. 
sharing the entire screen. Okay, so it looks like I have some sharing issue here. Let me check. Mm, are you folks able to see it? Because right now I'm doesn't allow me to share. Those. Oh man, looks like it requires a Chrome update for for me to share the screen. Let's see what can I do. Um, in this case, Chris, should I just share the link with you and then you can help me uh, uh, present it, something like that? Would that work? Oh, you're muted, Chris. Oh, sure. We could, we could try that. Okay. So maybe uh, in this case, I was hoping to do a real demo, but uh, it requires me to restart Chrome and all that. So I guess I'll just send you a video uh, that you can uh, present and then I'll uh, basically just talks through uh, some more details about it. So so can can you see the screen right now? Yeah, I can see it. So yeah. What would what, 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 what do I do? Just click the start? Yeah. Hi, this is Hong Hao and Yigo. We are a team of Stanford engineers working on Proof. Proof is a work identity solution for DAOs. Today, DAOs are having difficulties understanding their members' skills and past work. Proof changes that by turning any DAO contributor's wallet into a Web3 work portfolio. Users can mint non-transferable NFTs for their past work at DAOs, with on-chain DAO payment transactions as the proof. With proof, you can now show off all the works you did for DAOs and carry them with you. Let's take a look at the demo. Once you connect your wallet, you will be directed to a work NFT minting page, where you can pull up all the historical transactions from DAOs to your wallet and mint proof of work NFTs for each of the transactions. Over here, we're providing bankless wallet address. Click Get My Proof. You see, there are two past transactions from Bankless to my wallet for the works I did at Bankless. Now I can go ahead and add the details to make the work. By providing the work descriptions and the NFT names, I can give work contacts for the transactions that I had from Bankless. And now I can name the non-transferable work NFTs for each of them. After approving the transactions, you can see that uh, these two NFTs are minted. And I can go to view my badge page to see my work portfolio. So you see now like the Web3 work about web development and solidity work that I did for Bankless are all showing off here as my proof of work NFT portfolio page. This is also the page that I can share with others to showcase my past work for them. Over here, you can also check other people's wallet and see what other proof of work NFTs they have received for the work that they did in the past for DOMS. That's all for the demo. Thanks for your time. Proof of work cool. Oh, thanks, Chris, oh, for sharing. Uh, so I guess uh, right now I can kind of talks through a little bit since I can share, just talks through a little bit in terms of like uh, the best story about this and what's our, what are our uh, technical details and the roadmaps of this project. Um, so we started off, also, uh, me and Yiko are uh, engineers uh, working on this project and we both have experience with uh, Web3 and with uh, Web2 uh, programming side. And when we jump into Web3 world, uh, and at that time, like we joined uh, blockchain at Stanford, and there's a lot of people talking about DAOs, and we started like thinking about maybe we should try to look into uh, infrastructure building for DAOs. So we joined different, a lot of different DAOs and try to figure out uh, what's the kind of pain point that we can potentially help address. 
And the pain point that we found is that across a lot of large DAOs that we interviewed, uh, bankless, uh, Gitcoin founders, and a lot of DAOs reported a similar issue where right now that like, things are operating in Discord. And say if I join a Discord, then uh, who, who are the person that I should talk to that might be interested in working with me on on certain projects? And how do I know like what kind of at what kind of level of their skills that we can collaborate with? And similar problem for uh, for those DAOs as well. Like today, DAOs has a pretty complicated onboarding process usually uh, because they don't they're not sure if this person is the right person to give this task for. So what usually happens is that you you join and then you say you want to. Uh, work on, for, for example, solidity development, uh, contract development. They'll give you a very small task for you to try on, try out, and then evaluate the results. And then you can come back. And later, if they see that the result is good, they'll give you a, a larger project. So you gradually uh, go from there. And uh, so there's a kind of mismatch in terms of uh, the talents with skills, just because there's so much, uh, the, everyone's anonymous in this course. So there's not much knowledge around what are this member's skill is, what is their past work, and uh, what is their interests are. And, and this to the best interest for both memberships and DAOs to have that kind of level of understanding of, of like what, what, what am I capable of doing based on the works that uh, they did in the past. So that like uh, generates the proofs idea, which is a, a non-transferable work NFT portfolio uh, based on the past work that you did. And then how do you verify those past work? There's two sides of it. One is that um, like the demo that just showed, you basically pull up your wallet. And then right now you need to manually provide the uh, the DAO's uh, treasury wallet of where does the fund come from, from the DAO uh, to you as a work payment. So when you after you pull up that payment, that is uh, one kind of one aspect of the proof, which is you get paid uh, from a DAO before. And in that case, uh, what you could do is that you can annotate that work, provide more details of what you what did you do, and mint a proof uh, proof of work NFT for yourself. And then it will show up uh, kind of like a linking portfolio, but Web3 in a Web3 anonymous way based on your wallet and show up all the past work that you did. And on the other side, we also want to work with those DAOs directly where uh, it's, it's more like an automated workflow where when before DAO make the payment and uh, users can input their uh, work, what was the work descriptions of those, uh, the, the work that they did, and then they can submit a payment request. And when DAO approve the payment request uh, and Treasury get the payment from the Treasury to you, that's when we want to like inter inter uh, interact with that workflow and mean the NFT for you, which will show up as uh, verify as DAO because DAO approved that payment uh, and uh, approved that work and the payment to you. So uh, with that, what we think uh, we could do is to fill a gap in uh, in the current uh, Web3, especially in DAO identity space. Because if you look at it right now, we have different existing uh, Web3 tools for identity. I say you you have different, you attend different conferences, you have these kind of past experience plus your identity, which is plus your wallet, and, and that is Pope. Uh, and you can also do different trainings uh, and like on rabbit hole, and then you can, uh, get those NFTs attached to your wallet, which is another way to verify uh, your kind of uh, skill identity. But uh, none of these really ties directly to the work that you did, which is we think is the, the, main, uh, the main thing that is happening in DOS. So uh, Proof hope to tie that, uh, kind of fill this gap by uh, for each of the work that you did, we can show up that historical work uh, with NFTs for you. And you can carry it around. Like the demo show that like you can also not just showcase your own, uh, not, non uh, proof of work, non transferable NFTs, but you can also see other people's NFTs and we can potentially build a Web3 uh, kind of linking uh, work social uh, space where different people can explore uh, other people's skills, find, find project partners and also uh, be matched to the right project. Um, so yeah, that's it uh, for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, one question from me is that because uh, I have I have seen, especially from Stanford, there are, uh, and after Stanford, there are uh, many uh, DAO tooling projects emerged, uh, and there are a couple of them doing the similar things like you guys. Uh, so so like how, uh, so you you guys all have like di different concepts and uh, uh, trying to tackle the different problem, but. 
uh, finally is uh, somehow the, the 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 final product is all like a, a minted NFT based on the 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 works or projects that you have attended or worked before. Uh, it's, it's, I, I call it it's like or pop formed uh, products. So like, how do you differentiate from you know other competitors yeah. in the market right now? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. I think. So first of all, I think it's a good thing that uh, a lot of different teams are uh, trying to tackle this because I feel that I actually talked to some of the other teams. I think we all realized uh, the same kind of similar pain points in doubt and Web3 is about decentralization. So I'm happy that different protocols are uh, attacking this. Um, and in terms of differentiation, like I think we haven't really like think too much about competition, but specifically it's things that we think what, so we, we basically we're more mainly thinking about what DAOs uh, would need. And one of the things that uh, we haven't seen a lot, a lot of development uh, on the market is that other than the, the work identity NFT, is that some DAOs bring up the kind of demand that they want to define their own tiers of uh, different work within their community. Like say, and also help gamify that, uh, that contribution process. So an example is that, for example, you can have uh, like developer DAO, they have different tiers of uh, work NFTs. And in, in you can design uh, for a DAO, you can design kind of for different work stream, like design guild, uh, developer guild, and uh, I don't know, a marketing guild and things like that. And uh, they DAOs can define their own logic in terms of how I want to name different tiers and what, what kind of criteria qualify for different tiers. For example, like design master, design uh, junior, and things like that. So you can have different tiers, which is defined by DAOs, customized both by DAOs. And what we could do is that give each DAO a protocol where um, it's tied back to the work contributions. So for example, DAOs can define the logic on our protocol saying that, hey, we want uh, for people who get payment like three times plus, or for people who get a uh, hundred tokens distributed to them, they qualify for this tier of the NFT that DAOs defined. So which I think like this level of customizability uh, would be uh, pretty important for those styles and also important for the community beyond like just matching skills with the project, but also how, how do we incentivize people like gamify this contribution process, which I think that uh, would potentially be interesting. But maybe other teams are thinking about that too, but just uh, this one additional uh, observation that we see from DAOs that we think uh, will be useful. Cool, yeah, that's, I, I mean, that's totally makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, this is that that definitely gonna be a next uh, big problems, especially in, in the DAO area. And uh, if uh, some, and, and as you as you said, it's really good to see that many teams are trying to solve this problem. And uh, it, I yeah. really hope to see that uh, the proof team could, you know. Uh, be one of them and uh, you know so bring, bring the next uh, DAO revolutions to, to the whole industries. Yeah, gotcha. uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, and I guess that's it for today. Uh, I would like to appreciate all six teams to do the demo. Uh, I, I think that the, the session is super helpful for for audience to, to understand that what you guys are trying to do right now. Uh, and hopefully you guys could all uh, doing great uh, in the future and, you know, uh, build up the, the, the superstar products. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for, the, for joining us. And hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys all have a great time and uh, while, while you're, you guys are building. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, see you guys soon.